North America has long been home to some of the world's most iconic apex predators. From the stealthy cougar to the thunderous grizzly bear and the pack-hunting gray wolf. But what if I told you there's a new predator on the rise? One that's creeping into cities, adapting faster than any of its rivals, and may just redefine what it means to be an apex predator in the 21st century. Meet the Koi Wolf. This is the story of how nature, evolution, and human expansion gave rise to North America's newest and possibly future dominant predator, and why you need to pay attention. Let's start by defining what makes an apex predator. These are species at the top of the food chain, creatures with few or no natural predators, controlling ecosystems from the top down. In North America, we're talking about the gray wolf, a strategic pack hunter capable of taking down elk, deer, and even bison. The cougar, a solitary ambush predator, sleek and silent. The grizzly bear, a behemoth with brute strength and territorial dominance. The American alligator, reigning in the southeastern wetlands. But these legendary animals are now facing a new challenger. One that didn't come from ancient bloodlines but from a genetic fusion born out of necessity, evolution, and human interference. In the heart of North America, a new predator is quietly rising in power. It doesn't just prowl the forests and plains, it strolls down suburban streets, sneaks through city parks, and howls in your backyard. This isn't a myth, it's real, it's the koi wolf. So what exactly is a koi wolf? It's a hybrid, a fusion of 60% coyote, 25% wolf, 15% domestic dog. That's right. This isn't just a hybrid of two wild canines, it also has a splash of domestic dog DNA, giving it a totally unique behavioral edge. But unlike most hybrids in the wild which often face biological disadvantages, the koi wolf is thriving. In fact, it's the poster child for what scientists call hybrid vigor. To understand the koi wolf, we have to rewind to a century ago. As European settlers pushed westward and cleared forests for farmland, they drove wolves to the brink of extinction in many areas. With top predators in decline and ecosystems fragmented, coyotes, traditionally found in the western United States, began expanding eastward. Then, somewhere in the forests of the northeastern United States and southeastern Canada, coyotes and the remaining wolves began to interbreed. With human activity reshaping landscapes, they didn't just have the opportunity to breed, they needed to. Wolves were losing range, coyotes were being hunted, domestic dogs roamed freely. Over time, the genetic melting pot boiled up something entirely new, a species more robust, more intelligent, more bold. Koi wolves aren't just a mix of three animals on paper. Their bodies, behaviors, and biology reflect a carefully balanced combo of their ancestry. Larger than a coyote, more agile than a wolf. Most koi wolves weigh between 30 to 50 pounds, with some tipping the scales higher. Long legs, thick fur, and a strong jaw structure give them the power to hunt both small and medium-sized prey. Thanks to their coyote genes, they're fast and tireless. The domestic dog DNA makes them less fearful of human-modified environments. Like wolves, koi wolves often form small packs, especially when targeting larger prey like deer. This teamwork gives them a massive advantage over solitary hunters. From rural woodlands to bustling cities, koi wolves can survive just about anywhere. Here's where things get even more fascinating. Koi wolves are true opportunistic feeders. Their diet changes based on environment. In forests and farmlands, they hunt deer, rabbits, wild turkeys, and small mammals. In suburban neighborhoods, think squirrels, rats, feral cats, and garbage. In urban cities, koi wolves shift to scavenging, using alleyways, parks, and green belts like hunting trails. That dietary flexibility is one of their most powerful tools. Where other predators would starve or be driven out, the koi wolf adapts. Koi wolves are vocal and their calls are eerie. Their howls blend the high-pitched yips of coyotes with the deep, melodic howls of wolves. This vocal hybridization is more than just haunting, it's functional. It helps them coordinate hunts, maintain territory, and communicate over long distances. Pack intelligence, vocal coordination, and learning from both wild and urban experiences make koi wolves behaviorally sophisticated. 
Studies show they can even recognize traffic patterns, cross roads at quieter times, and avoid surveillance cameras. Koi wolves aren't just surviving in cities, they're thriving. In places like New York, Boston, Toronto, and Chicago, koi wolves have carved out urban territories, using city parks like forests and train tracks as travel corridors. Their mostly nocturnal nature makes them hard to spot, but they're there. In fact, many city residents don't realize they live right next to these predators until headlines break. Koi wolf spotted in Central Park or koi wolf caught on security camera. And remember, these aren't the scrawny suburban coyotes you might be used to. These are muscled, intelligent, highly adaptable hunters. This is the million dollar question. Are koi wolves replacing wolves and cougars as apex predators? In many parts of their range, the answer is already yes. Wolves and cougars are restricted to large, undisturbed wilderness. Koi wolves dominate the edges, suburban sprawl, farmland, small forests, and urban zones. By preying on deer and regulating small mammal populations, koi wolves are playing the role of ecosystem balancer. They're even affecting animal behavior in their range, creating a landscape of fear that reshapes how prey species feed and move. However, koi wolves aren't without limits. They can't take down elk or moose like full-sized wolves, and their hybrid genetics could pose long-term challenges. While hybrid vigor has given koi wolves their impressive adaptability, there are potential downsides. Genetic dilution, continued interbreeding with coyotes, dogs, and wolves may blur the lines, making koi wolves less genetically distinct over time. Conservation confusion are koi wolves a species, a subspecies, a morphotype? This ambiguity can lead to complications in wildlife policy. On top of that, their boldness brings them into conflict with people. Attacks on pets, roadkill incidents, and farmers losing livestock. As a result, many communities are calling for culls or management programs, and public opinion is sharply divided. Koi wolves, by being so adaptable, may outcompete native mid-sized predators like red foxes, bobcats, and even raccoons could be pushed out in areas where koi wolves move in. They fill multiple ecological niches, making them hard to classify and even harder to manage. On the flip side, their presence helps regulate deer populations, which helps prevent overgrazing, maintain plant biodiversity, and reduce tick-borne illnesses by limiting deer number. In short, koi wolves are shaking up the natural order, and fast. So where is this all going? As climate change, habitat fragmentation, and urban sprawl continue, the koi wolf is uniquely poised to thrive. It is adaptable, resilient, smart, and cunning. If trends continue, the koi wolf may evolve into a distinct species, further separating from both coyote and wolf lineages. But its future will depend heavily on how we treat it. Will we protect its habitats? Will we educate communities to coexist? Or will fear and misunderstanding lead to eradication attempts? So what do you think? Is the koi wolf North America's next apex predator? They have the traits, they have the range, they have the dominance, but they also have hurdles, genetic, ecological, and human based. Still, one thing is certain. The koi wolf isn't coming. It's already here, in forests, suburbs, and cities. It's howling at the edge of the wild, rewriting the rules of what it means to be an apex predator in a human-shaped world. Let me know in the comments, are koi wolves a success story of evolution, or a warning about what happens when humans disrupt nature? Make sure to like, share, and subscribe if you want more deep dives into the wild world of animal behavior, apex predators, and emerging ecological legends. Until next time, stay wild.